Matthew 13, verses 43 to 45. It says, Hold on. Actually, it's Matthew 12. Sorry, excuse me. Matthew 12. Verses 43 to 45. I repeat, it's not Matthew 13, it's Matthew 12, verses 43 to 45. Two verses. Check this out. When the unclean spirit is gone out of a man, because you guys got to pay close attention to this one. So do not move. This is really critical for you to understand. This is powerful. This is really powerful. When the unclean spirit is gone out of a man, he walketh through dry places seeking rest and findeth none. Then he saith, I will return into my house from whence I came out. And when he is come, he findeth it empty, swept, and garnished. Then goeth he and take it with himself seven other spirits more wicked than himself. And they enter in, dwell there, and the last state of that man is worse than the first. Even so, it shall be unto this wicked generation. I want to, sh I want to show you something. Will, will, check the word over there is, uh, give me verse, one verse before that. Then he says, I will return to my house from which I came out. So a demon has a will, right? According to the words, a demon is a person who has a will. And says, and he wills that he's going to go back to where he came from, correct? Okay, guys, we're going to talk. Yes, no, any no's, <laughs> any yeses, thank you, let me try it again, so that tells us the demon has a will, will. and he wills that he goes back to that house where he came out from, correct, yeah. he's just not entering the house, but first he wills. He decides something. Are you guys checking this out? He's decided to go back to where he came out from. Then it says, then he looks and searches the vessel or the person he came out from and scans the person, seeing if the person is filled with the word or is empty. If the person is empty, only if the person is empty, the scan says the person is empty. Then he goes back and gets seven other more wicked spirits and enters the person. I don't want to focus. I want to, sh God spoke to me something incredible for the, from the scripture. That's what I want to show to you. I understand seven more can come in. That's not the focus today. Will. The question is, if a demon has a will and can use his will, to prevail. Does he, did he prevail? Yes. Did he make the condition of the person worse? Yes. Did he cause total havoc and destruction? Yes. That's a demon doing it. How did he get there? He willed. He willed. He had a strong will to go back get up from his defeat, and become successful again. You guys getting it? This is a demon who was casted out, was unsuccessful, and became double successful because he willed. Catch it. 
This is a spirit not made in the image and likeness of God because of the principle of will. One principle, strong will. Strong will, he succeeds after a failure. He's knocked out, but he didn't give up. Goes and finds seven more and enters a human who is made in the image and likeness of God. Right back in. And becomes double successful. Seven times more successful. He got seven times more successful. How did it all begin? Will. 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 The, Mike, the Lord asked me this question. He said, how come a demon can will and prevail, make a comeback, cause total havoc and destruction? How can a normal human being made in the image and likeness of God, think about it for a moment, I'm talking about, I want you to follow me close. Here is a demon who became successful using will. Now let's talk about every single human being that exists on planet earth. I'm not talking about the children of God. I'm talking about human beings. Every human is still made in the image and likeness of God. They're not the children of God, but they are the creation of God. But whose image are they of? God. If a normal human being can will and go to moon, go to Mars, create a tower reaching all the way, could have reached all the way to heaven, become champions because they will, become successful because they will. If you look at some of the athletes, they're not Christians, but they're super successful because they will. They will. They desire and they will. Can become great in life because they will. And then the Lord asked me this question. He pointed me to the army of Afghanistan. Of course, I'm not going to get into politics, the bad decisions we have made, but I'm going to talk about the will. If a terrorist can succeed based on the will. They had no jets. They had no drones. They had no technology like we got. But Russia couldn't beat them down. Neither could we at this moment. We came out. Could we have? Yes. But the, the history books will record. The record of the history books will say we did not. Why? How come? Strong will. If a Terrorists can succeed because of a strong will. Think about it. A demon can succeed because of a strong will. A human can go to moon because of a strong will. Invent light bulbs because of a strong will. Do the impossible because of the strong will. Who would have thought 20, 30, 50 years back that the cars could drive by themselves? Who could have thought 50 years back that we could have televisions in our hands? Will. Will. The Lord asked me this question. This was the question he asked me. He says, if a demon can prevail because of a strong will, if a human can go up to moon and come back because of a strong will, how much more a child of God can? Are you following me? How much more a child of God will? I think we are better than demons. Don't you think so? Are you better than a demon? He is no match for you. He is under your feet. A demon is not even made in the image and likeness of God. You are. A normal human doesn't even have the spirit of God inside of them. You have. I have. If they can build a tower going all the way up to heaven, what is impossible with us?
What is it that we can't do? What is it that we can't get up from? What is it that we can't have a comeback? If a demon can have a comeback, why can't you have a comeback? If a demon can prevail, who can stop you, the church, from prevailing? If a demon can succeed, who can stop the son of God or a daughter of God to succeed? If a normal Jordan and Harry, who doesn't even have the spirit of God inside of them, can go to moon, what can stop you from reaching heavenly realms and pulling the heavenly realms in earthly realms? Will! What's your will? Can your will be broken? Is the question. That's the problem with us Christians. Is these guys, that demon never allowed his will to be broken. We having the spirit of God, we quit. Just because the torture, we couldn't handle the torture. We couldn't handle the fire. We couldn't handle the nose. We couldn't handle the delays. We quit. No, this is not for me. The guy who invented light bulbs, he never quit. People laughed at him. He never quit. In the secret place of the Most High God, if you are not strong-willed and stubborn about the things of God, you're not going to get them. It is one decision of your will that will change history. I will not, will not have a second-hand Christian life. I will not be like a second-class Christian. I will not travel in this journey in the second class. I must be exactly like Jesus. I must do exactly what Jesus did. I must have the same encounters like Jesus had. I must have the same power like Paul had, Peter had, John had, Elijah had, Moses had. I am no inferior. I will not settle down for the second best. I will not settle down for a mediocre Christianity. If they can invent light bulbs, Elon Musk can be billionaires because of will. No matter how evil they are, because of will. Will. High school dropouts can make it and make it big. Because of will. Because of will. Here, we got the Holy Ghost. And still can't make it. Don't point the finger to God. Point the finger to yourself. Do you have a will? If you got a will to succeed... Nothing can stop you. If nothing could stop the demon, who can stop you? You got a will. When you go in the secret place, God, I have a will. I got to see you. I'm not going to give up till the time I see you face to face. I got to see you, Jesus. I got to be just like you, Jesus. I got to have this miracle, Lord, which you talk about. I got to have this word manifest in my life. If the will can help a demon, can help an evil person, why will it not help you? God said this to me, become stubborn about my will. Become, become stubborn about my things. And then he told me these things. A will, if, you are, if you're strong-willed, That'll require a few things. If you're strong-willed, that will require training the will. Disciplining yourself. Self-control. Never giving up kind of attitude. Do not take it easy on yourself or on the word or on the promise or in the secret place when nothing is happening. Do not take it easy. I will, I desire, I will, I will succeed. Have the list of your prayers till the time they're answered. I will 
this is happening in my life. That's my desire, God. And your desires, if they match the word of God, you're going to get them. I'm not talking about evil desires. Can a Christian have evil desires? Yes, they can if they're carnal. They can. I'm not talking about those kind. I'm talking about spiritual kind. God, I desire you. If John could be lifted up to the heavenly realms, why can't we be, Lord? Why can't we be that intimate that we know you face to face, hear you exactly right, and do exactly what you want us to do so we can bring heaven on earth and manifest it, not just talk about it. Heaven on earth, come down. Heaven on earth, come down. Heaven on earth, come down. Are you kidding me? Let's do it. Let's do it. I thank you. I thank you. Let's do it. This is how you'll do it. You will decide. You will decide. You will will. And you will desire. And you will be stubborn about the things of God. Do you know why did we had so many denominations? Because we all began right. There was no denominations in the early church. Everybody believed the same way. There were divisions, but not denominations. But when God, when delays began to happen in the things of God, people quit. They said, this is not for today. Signs, wonders, miracles, power of God is not for today. It's not for the church. It was for apostles. It died with them. Guess what? False theology came in. People began a lie. And they don't even will for God to show up. They don't even will for people to be healed, delivered, set free. Or signs of wonders to take place. There is no will, there is no desire. If there is no will, there is no desire, you can never have it. If you're down on the mat and there is no will, there is no desire, you will never get up. But if you have a will that nothing can stop me, nothing can keep me down, there is nobody who will be able to stop you. Forget about demons. If there are billion devils combined, billion Satan combined, they can't stop you. Because now you have done what God wanted you to do. Will. I will, God. And I will not let nobody break my will. In the face of defeat, don't break the will. In the face when you're down, when the chips are down, don't let anyone, anybody break that will. Still see yourself as the champ. Still see yourself as a son and the daughter of the Most High God. That's a strong will. Let me tell you something. When the demon was casted out, he went to dry and arid places seeking rest. That tells me he was restless. Right? Am I going too fast or am I still making sense? What is it, guys? Tell me. Talk to me. Am I going too fast? Still making sense? Thank you. Okay. So that tells me the demon became restless. He was in the desert. The location was desert. There was no water over there. It was dry. Dry and arid places. Many times you also go through dry and restless times. But it is in this time a real champ is born. Because the promise is not coming to pass. When you got a will doesn't mean it's just going to happen right now. Abraham had to wait, but he never quit his will. He never quit his will. You say, I got will. I, I, you say, I got faith. You, I don't have a will. You don't have faith. Because faith without will will never work. So if you got a will, that will will force you to be disciplined. I got a will to succeed in my test. That will will force you to study. I got a will. I got to be a grade A student. That will will force you to be equipped and study and do your research, correct? If you say, I got a will that I'll be a grade A student and you never study, you are never disciplined enough, would you be a grade A student? 
That tells me something. That folks who are strong-willed are disciplined. Disciplined. They're not a loosey-goosey kind of, you know, everything goes. No, nothing goes in their life. Only and only strict training of the Holy Ghost goes in their life. And these are the hard words. Nobody wants to hear about them. If you want to succeed, you will be trained by God. And training is not easy. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I have faith. You have nothing. I don't need these works. You, you don't have faith. If you will succeed, you will be disciplined, trained by God. It's like a boxer. Who's going to face his opponent. If he doesn't train. If he doesn't get equipped. If he doesn't get disciplined with his food. With his gym. With his exercise. With his running. With his thoughts. With what he's saying. It's a total package. If he's not disciplined and doing everything right. He's going to lose it. He's going to lose the match. Do you know that? Okay, if you read history books and you see armies, back in the day we had horses and people would fight on horses. And the commander would always give a pep talk. He's working, he's building their determination, their level of faith. He's strengthening their will. In the time when they were building the tower of Babel, the Bible says people willed, willed. The demon willed. Let me tell you something. The will is so powerful it works both ways. It works both ways. I want to tell you something. If the evil people can will and, and begin to destroy nations, are they successful in doing it? You better believe it. They're very successful in doing it. Are they successful in killing babies? Absolutely. Look around you. Are they successful in performing child sacrifices? Absolutely. Are they successful in making this one world system, the system of the Antichrist, come to pass? Absolutely. Are they killing our people in the hospitals right now? Absolutely. Was Mr. Gates successful in vaccinating folks in India and Africa and killing millions of people? Absolutely. Better believe it. It's just go research. Absolutely. Was he successful? Absolutely. Was the demon successful? Absolutely. Why were they so successful? Because they trained, they disciplined, they never gave up. The will is so strong that will, check this out, the will alone can manifest every single thing that it, it is willing for. Will. What, is, what happens in the, when many times the doctor says, well, he was willing to make it, that's why he made it. He's a strong fighter. He was not willing to make it, that's why he, he gave up. He didn't make it. Will. Will. If you are a champ, or if you want to be a champ, or if you are a champ, you got to start with will. I desire you, God. I desire everything about you. Thank you, Lord. Or whatever God has spoken to you. For example, if God spoken to me that I will visit this country through you, I better have a will. I better have a will never to give up in the face of giving up. I better have a will that I can never, if I'm down on the mat, that doesn't mean I'm knocked out. I always have to get up and give my best shot again. Will. Question, if a demonic will can prevail, how much more a child of God's will will prevail? You believe it? Why are you so silent? Do you believe this? Yeah. 
So what will it do? What does it take for a strong-willed person? Discipline. Training. You can't say, oh, the Lord said this to me, but I didn't do it. Are you kidding me? If God said something to you, but I slack on the things. If your boss said something to you, you didn't do it. One, two, three chances, and then you're fired. Next person. Oh, I got the grace. You keep banging that drum of grace, and that grace should have made you more powerful and more than a conqueror. But if the grace drum is making you weak and breaking your will and lacking discipline in your life, that's not the grace of God. It's the grace of the devil. So a strong-willed person will be disciplined, will allow themselves to be trained. And these two things are not easy. That's why not many people succeed. My question is, if a demon can be disciplined, how much more should we be disciplined? Yes. How much more should we know that nothing is impossible with us? Right. Nothing is impossible with me. Nothing is impossible Amen. through me. You've got to look at yourself. I now am not a normal human being. I'm a son of the Most High God. And I don't have a part of God. Entire Godhead is living inside of me just like he lived in Jesus. Is that true? Yes. Yes. Or I got a part of the Holy Ghost. The head of the Holy Ghost is here. One eye. Some people think they got one-eyed Holy Ghost inside of them. I don't. I don't have a senior, junior, mediocre. I got the same spirit that rose Christ from the dead. is living inside of me. If I am the full package, then what is impossible with me? Nothing. Nothing. What does that mean? I will just to be like Jesus. Just to be like Jesus. Jesus, because he said it. He said, you shall do greater things. For me, greater things start with seeing God. Seeing his face all the time. Hearing him all the time. And then doing exactly what he wants me to do. 24-7. All the time. For me, greater things are just the looks healing people. Shadows moving things. And we have seen it in bits and pieces. For me, greater things are, no matter what the problem, the church is the solution. For me, greater things are the glory of God manifesting, and we seeing it tangibly all the time, which you see. Many people see it, and we see it. Flashes, angels hear it, we, we hear them, you know, all great, amazing signs and wonders. But for me, greater things are, the king, if Moses can take, God can take Moses and divide the Red Sea, greater things are, there are flashes happening over here. Somebody seeing it? It's not my watch. I'm going to keep my watch down so you guys can believe it. Yeah. Like white balls moving around. Anyways, greater things. As Moses can split the Red Sea, what can you not split? Elijah was fed. What can stop your provision? You can stop it. God won't. Devil has no power over you. He only has the power what you give him. But where do you break is his entry point. Okay, let me tell you this thing. First discipline and training is, it's going to be hard. It's not going to be easy. It's a narrow road. Only a few find it. Because most people are on the broad way. Easy, comfortable, awesome. They love their life. That's their portion. And that's not the flash I was talking about. There's a moving flash. Anyways. Hmm. Comfortable, Broadway. And sadly, that's the story of the majority of the church. Easy, comfortable, easy to digest food. Uh, one hour, 15 minute service, two hour service, then we got the next group coming in. Guys, please, we have the next group coming in. Holy Ghost, we don't have time for you at the moment. What you are doing, please continue in the next group. If there is a move. 
The first thing you need to discipline is, no, it is not going to be easy. You're going to train, and you're going to train hard. What will you train with? You're going to train with your faith. You're going to train with every single word God has given you. You're going to discipline yourself. You're going to discipline yourself going to the secret place of God. No matter what, you've got to be there. You cannot have a crack in your life. You cannot have a weak moment in your life. You cannot afford that. You gotta go in, you gotta get disciplined, you gotta train, you gotta train hard till the time heaven manifests. Till the time the promise that God gave you manifests. You gotta declare, you gotta prophesy, you gotta pull, you gotta give in the realm of the Spirit, you gotta do it. Amen. Don't say, I had a bad day. Forget about the bad days. The bad day can't be bigger than the will you got. You can't have a bad day. Don't have time to have a bad day. I don't have time to have a bad day. I don't have time to sin. I don't have time to get sick. I only have time to prevail. Amen. I got to have that will. You had a bad day. That's why I didn't go to God. But you're, you had a bad day, but you're still breathing. You have time to breathe. Don't take it easy on the things of God. Will. Every champ of God or of the devil began with a will. How much more can we rise? We're not even living to the standard of normal human beings. If that Joe Bill Gates can succeed and be a billionaire, how much more you? He's of the evil one. You are of God. Well, the discipline will take place. Let me just put it this way. You will face the music when you will. You will be tested when you will. You will be tempted when you will. You will go through the ringer when you will. The testing of your faith. Whose faith? My faith. If I got faith, I got no test. You are crazy. Somebody lied to you. If you got faith, the first thing is your faith will be tested. James says that. The testing of your faith produces perseverance. Whose faith? My faith. They taught you a wrong message. If you got faith, you won't be tested. They're not telling the truth to you. Comfort will kill you. Compromise will come in. Complacency is the name of disaster. Don't take it easy. Do not take it easy. Let me tell you something. The first place you're going to get disciplined and train is when it is not easy. That means sometimes the road can be rocky. That means you can have a sucker punch from the devil and all of a sudden you're like, man, I was not expecting that. I had faith. I was going for it. I was declaring. I was believing. I was fasting. I was praying. I was doing everything right. Why am I down on the mat? This is where it will. This is the test. When you're down on the mat, can you still have a strong will and see yourself as a champ coming out of this battle, knocking the devil out, knocking the temptation out, knocking the trial out, knocking that victim mentality out, knocking that test out, knocking that defeat out, and climb the mountain and become the champ? Amen. Or would you say, yeah, this is not for me. This is not, this ain't my gift. This ain't my gift. God doesn't heal through me. It ain't my gift. I believe he said, go lay hands on the sick. Where did he say, I'm going to give some special powers to somebody? I see him offices, but I didn't see. Hey, if you got the Holy Ghost, did he not come with the whole package? Amen. I understand the gifts of healing and the gifts of prophecy, but you all got the same Holy Ghost. That tells me if you got the Holy Ghost, you got God inside of you. I thank God for his DNA, but I'm more bigger than his DNA because God's living inside of me. That means I have the solutions. You can have the problems. I have the solution. You can have a storm. I will silence it. You got it. You got it. 
How will it work? When your faith is tested and when you're on the mat, let nothing break your will. Let nothing break your will. If something can break your will, that's the crack. Let me tell you, prove it to you this way. Check this out. <clears throat> if you read and study the scripture about the passage I just quoted from Matthew first, the devil gets out, the demon gets out, goes back to dry and arid places, gets retrained. You know what is happening in the dry and arid places? He's getting trained. That's why in the camp of the devils, in the camp of the devils, there is no rest. There is no love. There is fear. The principalities are their drill sergeants that train them. Like, hey, we got defeated. They go through next training. Once we were in Utah, I was telling the story to <clears throat> some people. We were in Utah traveling from Provo to another place, driving. And this was a flat, totally flat ground desert, dry. And we are traveling and all of a sudden I see like an army getting trained. Army getting trained, but there is no love, there is fear in the camp. There is fear in the camp and they were doing drills, they were doing movements, they were, they were practicing as if they're getting ready for the battle, as if they're getting ready for something. I saw it. I'm like, what in the world is, is this? The Lord says, this is the training ground for the demons. I'm like, whoa, and the principalities were training them. They had no rest because uh, when they're casted out, they, exactly the same thing happens to them like the scripture tells you. They go through dry and arid places. And what are they looking for? They're looking for rest. But what happens? They find none because their, their drill sergeant comes and takes them by their neck and says, you failed me. you got to do this, 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 this. And they train them harder. That's exactly what happens. The, the, the demon doesn't take seven baths right away. Read your scriptures. He has to go by himself. First, he goes by himself and scans the person. Shh. If the person is empty, he becomes successful. If the person is empty, he becomes successful in bringing seven more. Okay. All the person had to do was fill his life with the word and seven more would have not come in. The demon actually would not be even able to get seven more close to the guy because the seven more are more powerful than the spirit. Do you know that? Read it, in, it's in your Bible. The seven more are more wicked than this demon if he brings this guy close to somebody who's filled with the word of God, those seven more will make this demon's life terrible. They will punish this demon. You can read it in your scriptures. Scan. When the house is empty, then he brings seven more. If the house is not empty, he can't bring seven more. Check this out. If there's a crack in the foundation, seven more got in. If there was no crack in the foundation, nobody can get in. That's what I'm trying to tell you. If there is crack in your will, that will will never prevail. That will will never prevail. If there is no crack in your will, in your will, in your will, in my will, I'm strong as strong can be. I'll always be strong. I can never have a bad day. Why can't you guys come to a new place in Christ? Come to a biblical place in Christ. I'm going to go from glory to glory, right? Why can't, why in the world your graph is like glory, boom down, glory, boom down, glory, it's like a ping pong, boom, 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 boom. That's where you got to train yourself. When the chips are down, let your will not be down. When you are down, let your will 
be same exact ditto heavenly. Heavenly. I'm fixated on heaven. Okay. Let nothing break your will. Nothing. So, let's say I got a strong will now. I'm disciplining myself. I desire to succeed and I'm going to do everything in my power to succeed. I'm going to discipline. I'm going to work hard. I'm going to do every single thing to succeed. I will work hard. This gospel of there is no works required is a demonic, satanic gospel because faith without works is dead. It's, there is no faith without works. I'm going to train and I'm going to train hard. Very hard. God's given me that promise. I'm going to do everything in my ability to make sure I manifest that promise. God's told me I'm going to succeed in this test coming. That means I'm going to study very hard. I will score A+. I'll devour this book. you got to understand when you take that stand... From you to go from glory to glory to glory to glory, there is resistance in the way. There is resistance in the way. That's why the Bible says submit to God. Resist the devil. Right? Wrong. Guys, go on, talk to me. Go on, talk to me. Scripture says submit to God, resist the devil. Correct? Thank you. And what will happen? He will flee from you. There is resistance in the way. We are going up. We are going up. There is resistance in the way. The job of resistance is to break your will. How will that happen? Is when they can put you down. And then say, hey, you are down. This thing that God promised will never happen in your life. It's for somebody else. Somebody else is always better than you. That promise will come to pass in somebody else's life. Thank you, Lord. But it's not going to happen for you. You're not the person. Have you noticed? It's like you work super hard, but somebody else always got the credit. It happened with me all the time growing up. Like uh, when I was a good kid in the school... Doing great things, studying hard. I'm like, I got to be in, <clears throat> in India, you have class monitors. I don't know what you have over here. What do you have, Elijah, over here? Like the guy who's in charge? Monitors? Still the same thing? Monitors? Okay. What do they have? Do they give them the same authority, some like teachers? Like who's in charge? The teacher's aide kind of thing? Yeah, I was like, yeah, I was always working hard to be a good kid. <clears throat> I had to work super hard to be a good kid. Uh, I'd be like, I'm staying out of trouble, scoring good grades. And I always expected this semester I would be the teacher's aide, the class monitor. I'd be given authority. It was always given to somebody else. Then growing up, when I began to play professional cricket, I'm like, I'm going to be the captain. I'm the guy scoring maximum runs. I was not made the captain. I mean, always good things happen to somebody else after I work super hard for them. And I thought I deserved it. Guess what happened? When they did not make me teacher's aide, it just said in me, what's the point? What's the point? What's the point of scoring such good grades? What's the point in being a good kid? What's the point? Let's just do every, let's just go and do everything that everybody else did. And guess what happened to me? I did everything what everybody else did, but I mastered those bad things. I'm like, I'm going to now show you guys the opposite end of what it is. I'm like, if I got to be bad, I got to be good at it. I got to be really good at it. My parents were called to the principal's office almost every month, a couple times. They always tell me he'll be suspended. He'll be suspended. What happened? Somebody broke my will to be good. Somebody broke my will 
to be a disciplined kid. Somebody broke my will to say, you know what? Who cares? They don't care. They don't care. And I took the turn for the worse. Somebody was able to break my will. When you come to God, you have an enemy who is willing and trying and is restless if he doesn't break your will. That's the resistance. The resistance is not, oh, I failed. The resistance is when you fail, can you see yourself as a champ? The resistance is not, I had a, oh man, I'm on the, on, on the mat, mat. The resistance is, can you still see yourself? I am a child of God. The resistance is nothing is impossible with Jesus Christ and with me. Can you still see yourself through the glass of Jesus? Or would you see yourself, I, this is not for me. You quit in the kingdom of God. Check this out. There is no place for quitters. I should tell you as it is, there is no place for quitters in the kingdom of God. That's why Judas went straight to hell and Peter, who had sinned more, was forgiven. Peter never quit on himself. Somebody quit on God and turned around when God says, go forward, don't look back, and she became a pillar of salt. Quitters have no place. Don't quit. Can you just, when you're down, look at yourself. I'm a champ. Don't let people speak rubbish in your life. You don't need that fellowship. You need fellowship of people who will push you forward in your call, destiny, and grow you in Christ. Don't surround yourself with relatives, neighbors, friends who don't push you in God. Don't. If somebody, even your closest or dearest, puts you back and say, you can't do this, you can't do this, you're not this, you're not that, don't have fellowship with them. Because what the devil is doing, he's using them to break your will. When my son got sick, the doctor said, uh, 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 don't do this. This is an incurable disease. This can never be cured. But my will was he is healed and will be cured, not just put in remission, will be cured. I'm like, I'm going to do what I got to do. Cut the long story short. The doctors got shocked and said, what the heck are you doing? I'm like, if I, even if I told you what I'm doing, you'll never do it. My will supersedes your will. He whose will is bigger will win. Will. What do you will? What do you will? I will. I'm a champ. I will. I desire nothing less than Jesus. Nothing less than Jesus. Nothing less than Elijah the prophet. Moses the prophet. If God can do it through them, God can do it through me. Nothing. I'm not a mediocre Christian. Nothing less than John the Apostle. Nothing less than the Apostles. If Thomas can go to a nation and shake the nation, why can't I? When I came over here, I heard these things from all over the place. You got an accent, who's going to understand you? Every odd stacked against me. Though we, we, we don't believe in racism in the church, but believe me, it exists. When somebody says, I got a black church, I got a white church, I got a Hispanic church, that's racism. That should not be the church. That's racism right there. Yep. White, oh, let me just, it's like I was telling. Somebody uh, has a, a lure on their message, and their lure only attracts tuna. Let me just preach to the white folks. Hey guys, how are you doing? God has a great plan for your life. God bless you. Come, everything is great. By the way, give your offerings and tithes and God will bless you. You are amazing. We all love to hear them because they speak, oh, they catch the white bait, white fish. <laughs> then we have a black bait. Oh, sister. Hallelujah. Praise God. The Holy Ghost is all over me. We got a black bed. Bring the handkerchief on. Hallelujah. Then we got a Hispanic bed. Gloria a Dios. 
<laughs> oh, man. Oh, man. <laughs> yeah. When I came over here, he said, hey, why? Be- go to Beaverton. There are Indians over there. I'm like, I didn't come to America to preach to Indians. <laughs> if, I, if I was to preach to Indians, I would be in India. <laughs> we thought we sent the missionaries to, uh, to India. I'm like, you thought that? God sent me over here. God sent me over here. Every odd stacked against me. Can't speak in the proper... I don't got an American accent. I don't complain about it. I love my accent. That's who I am. I'm white, I'm black. I don't complain about it. I love myself. That's the way God created me. I love it. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. I'm made in the image and likeness of God. I look like God. I have no inferiority complex, but the devil tried to break my will from the get-go. In the Bible college, they said to me, well... We have done a favor to people who come from Asia, India, Africa by bringing you in. I'm like, you've done a favor to me? I'm paying my bills. <laughs> there are people over there that don't even pay their bills. I'm paying my bills. Anyways. If I told you the whole story, how? The devil tried to break my will from the very get-go. From the very get-go. God called me to pray for the sick. He has called every one of us, by the way, to pray for the sick. You're called to pray for the sick. You're called to be great. You're not called to be mediocre. God's called you to be great. God called me. God called me great. When God called me great, I can't accept nothing but greatness. They tried to break that greatness from me from the get-go in the name of humbleness. I'm like, that ain't humble. If God says you're great, I can't accept nothing but greatness. If I told you the whole story, you're gonna, we'll all cry together. Anyways, cut the long story short. When you got a will and you got a call and you got a desire, you're going to face this music of being on the mat. You're going to be sucker punched. You're going to go through trial. You're going to travel on this narrow road. It is not going to be easy. You're going to have rain come upon you. You're going to have storm hit your house. You're going to have winds blow against you. But because you got the foundation right and you got the obedience part right, nothing can break that house. And that house will come, become stronger after the storm. After the storm. That house will wither the storm and come out stronger. But there are many kind of Christians out there who don't got a house. Who don't have the will to succeed. Those kind close down their churches. Those kind don't meet. Those kind socially distance. Those kind put a stupid thing on their face and call it protecting society. Those kind quit on God and say, God, this is not for me. This is for my neighbor. This is... Those kind quit on greatness. Let me tell you something, who you are. If, God, if Christ was great, then you are great. God is inside of you. You are God kind. You are God grace. You are the salt. You are the light. You are the ambassador. You are the embassy. You are not just DNA of God. You got God inside of you. You got God kind. You are his race. You are his child. You have nothing which can stop you. The word impossible doesn't exist with you. That's who you are. Then how can I accept? How can you accept nothing? How can you accept anything? Inferior to that. Anything. Anything. Does it mean you're just going to get there because that's who you are in the spirit? That's who you just become like this in one day? No. No. David was the king to begin with, but he got the office after Saul died. After Saul died. What does it tell you? It tells you, you you got these journeys to go through. You will be put on the mat. You will be punched. You will be tested. 
you will be. If the devil is able to break that will, he got you. But if the devil is not able to break that will, you broke him. You broke him. You broke him. You know, people say, I want to break through. That is how breakthroughs happen. You broke him. Your will broke the will of the resistor. That's breakthrough. You want a breakthrough? Don't ask for prayer. Don't ask for prayer. Pray for me, I'm going to have a breakthrough. No, you won't. If you, a prayer would have caused a breakthrough, you had a breakthrough. You would have had a breakthrough 10 years back. Don't ask for prayer. Ask for will. God, let nothing break my will. I'm going to train God with you. I'm going to train with the Holy Ghost. I'm going to train hard till the time I become the champ. Till the time I have the belt around my waist. Till the time I take on my position. I'm going to train with you. Don't ask for prayer. Train. Ask for will. Ask for will to succeed. Ask when you're down, God, let me never quit on your word. Let me never quit on what you say about me. Because if you said something different that God says about you, you quit. You quit. You quit. I didn't know you did. Absolutely you did. Because God's given that creative power to you. Life and death is in the power of your tongue. How in the world the social media and the news media created so much fear and panic? They spoke. They spoke it into existence. How in the world these doctors are killing so many people? They're speaking over their people. They are dying, they are dying, they are dying, they are dying, they are dying. The killing people are dead. How much more can you speak? I give life, I give life, I give life. I lose life, I lose healing, I lose health. Think about it for a moment. Don't be fixated on the devil. The reason, I don't want to pick on somebody over here, but the reason Portland is weird is because, somebody said, because this city was dedicated to the devil. Somebody did something. I don't give a darn what the devil did. Thank you, Lord. I don't, I don't give a darn if the city, oh, they sacrificed to the devil. Oh, check this out. If this sacrifice to the devil is the sacrifice of the devil bigger than the sacrifice of Jesus. They sacrificed so many human babies to God, uh, to, to, to Jesus, uh, to devil, devil. They sacrificed so many human ba- babies to the devil. They're killing babies. They're doing human sacrifices. There are witches and there are warlocks over here. And they're everywhere. And this is nothing. You go to India, you're going to find them in every corner. People will take their hands and begin to show your dead ancestors on their hand. It's very common. It's witchcraft is very common. They go, oh, wow, it's nothing, nothing new. There are witches over there, there's a coven over there, there's this, there's this. That's why that neighborhood is, uh, hood is messed up. That tells me you believe somewhere the sacrifice given to devil is bigger than the sacrifice of Jesus Christ. Which actually, not just that, think about it for a moment. He took the keys away from the devil. The devil used to have the keys. He took those keys and said, no, 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 devil. I am going to take these keys back from you. And I'm going to give these keys to my children. That tells me somewhere you believe the sacrifice of the devil is bigger than the keys that God gave you. Somewhere. Somewhere. That's the reason Portland is weird. That's the reason this neighborhood is weird. Because there are witches, there are drug lords, there are this, there are this, there is that. Then why don't you change it? Who's going to change it? Your complaints, your murmurs, your, your sight. Where is your sight? Lift it up a little bit. I'm flowing. Thank you. Where is your sight? Tim said, we are not a thermometer, we are a thermostat. We change the temperature. We don't take a reading, oh, that's the temperature. Any joke can say this is wrong with this person, but it takes a real man or a real woman of God to turn something wrong into right. You are that person. 
You're not like, oh, I just observe. God's given me the gift of discernment. What good is that discernment if you can't change it? I thought I got Christ inside of me. Christ always changed cities. This is the problem over here. That's why an earthquake is coming. Why don't you stop it and ask God to save people through you? If God says, I'm going to release an earthquake, that's different. If devil is creating a havoc, why don't you change it? Don't tell me reasons why you got a fracture. Tell me the cure of it. Oh, if, think about it. You go to a doctor and the doctor says, Oh, I know you why you got a fracture and you are in pain. I know why you broke your bone. The reason you broke your bone was you fell from the stairs and he kept going, giving you reasons. He keeps giving you reasons. You're, you're in pain. He's like, I know why I have a fracture. What's the cure? If he never gives you the cure, gives you the reason, run away from the doctor. If a Christian only tells you why the mess and they don't have the answer for the mess, you don't want fellowship with those kind. You don't want fellowship with that kind because bad fellowship, bad company corrupts, destroys good godly faith, good godly character. Faith's all you got. You need it on earth. Somebody always questions your faith. Get away from them. Get away from them. Find yourself a good group, even if you have four or five friends, but or one friend who will believe like you do, who will believe the word of God. When ships are down, they will never quit on God. You need those kind around you because iron sharpens iron. Will, when you go to the secret place, will. I will, God, today to see you. I will, God, to talk to you. I will, I'll praise God. I will, I'll thank God. I will, I'm just like Jesus. If you will, who can stop you? If you will, you can be sinless. If you will, you can do all that Christ did above and beyond. If you just will, you're not, you don't have a, a lack of power, you have a lack of will. You don't have lack of Jesus, you got a lack of will. Because you have been taught, it's easy, just keep coming to the church. But nobody tells you, no, it's not easy. It is hard work. You got to never quit on God. You can never quit on that promise. You got to train hard. Train where? You start with faith. Start with your identity. Let no one steal that identity. Oh, I don't feel like it. I don't care how I feel like. I'll tell my body what it has to feel like. I don't feel like today uh, as I'm the best child of God. I don't care what I feel like. I'm a son. I'm a son. I'll always be a son. I've been born again, born of God. I don't need a feeling to tell me who I am. I got the word. It's done. Uh, my Christianity can't be dependent or, or relied based on a feeling. I can't use feeling as a crutch to drive me forward. I only got faith. I don't live by feelings. I can feel horrible and keep moving forward. I, I could be right down on the mat and still say I'm a child of God. I'm a man of God destined for greatness. I'll conquer the world for Jesus. I'll conquer the world for Jesus. I'll con this is my city. This ain't the devil's city. This is my city. I'll conquer this city. For Jesus, no matter what. No matter what. No matter what. Well. I think. That's what the Lord said to me. Be strong willed. Be strong-willed about the things of God. Put out just like I taught you. Thanksgiving board. Praise board. Put a, put a board of what has God spoken about you. What does God say about you? What dreams has He given you? What vision has He given you? 
What is your desire? What is your will? Do you just feel, oh, if I just made it to heaven, if that's what you will, that's what you're going to get. I just made it to heaven, praise God. Such a victim mindset Christianity. I have no respect for them. I don't. I don't, I go, I don't respect weakness. I don't. I respect strength. In my weakness, whose strength is made perfect? His strength is made perfect. So I respect perfect strength. Oh. Mm. Are we not all supposed to be humble and just, you know, wait for him to come? Are you, who's going to take dominion? Somebody's going to take dominion. If you want to be that Israelite who will always stay on the sideline, never do a thing about Goliath, you can be that Israelite and celebrate the victory. I am going to celebrate the victory. I'm going to cause the victory. I want to be that Goliath who takes the stone and hits Goliath. Uh, so, uh, sorry, I want to be that David that takes up a stone, not just stands on the, uh, on the sideline. Somebody has to pick the stone up and kill the Goliath, kill the giant. I'm not going to just stand and say, great job, David. I've got to be that David. I'm celebrating the victory. I'm causing the victory. Which one are you? Oh, we're not just going to be on the sidelines and clap, or would you be the reason of clapping? You're great. God's made you great. You're not lacking greatness. It's in you. You're not lacking any. He says he will not withhold one good thing from you. He's not withholding any good thing from you. You got it. All you're doing is when the test of faith comes, the test puts you down. You are in pain. You are in agony. You are thinking it's not you, but really it is you. You think you can't make it. You think you got this problem, this problem. You think you can never get over the problem, but the fact is you already did. You just have to see it when you don't see it. You just have to believe it when you can't believe it. You still have to be moving forward when you're hit. You can't go back. I ain't going to go to church because I don't feel you quit then. You quit. That's why he said like this. And the danger of quitting is this. That's why he said like this. Many will come to me that day and say, Lord, Lord, did I not do this? Did I not do that? Did I not do that? And I will tell them, get away from me. I never knew you, you wicked servant worker of iniquity. Quitters. 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 Oh, that, who, that person offended me. Who got offended? Who got offended? You got offended. That means you gave more power to that person than the word of God. That means that person had more power than Jesus Christ in your life. Who is your Lord? Jesus or that person? Really, if Jesus is your Lord, then you can never be offended. Oh, that person brought offense, but I killed it. In Jesus' name, I forgave. And I'll deal with him in the realm of the spirit. Are you catching it? Oh, no. No, I have a right. Now, you've got a right to succeed and forgive. That's your right. That's your privilege. You're Christ-like. He forgave. You have a right to be great. You have a right to walk on water. You have a right to fly. You have a right for signs, wonders, miracles. You have a right, every single right that God has, He's given it to you. You are seated at the right hand of God with His Son, Jesus Christ. You've got your own throne. That's your right. Now I'm down, I feel like this. Well, if down, being down gives you rights and privilege, you will keep enjoying them then. Keep enjoying the rights and privileges of the mat. I don't want to enjoy the rights and privileges of the mat. I want the right and privileges of the champion belt. That's what I want. Let nothing stop you from believing the word of God. Put a board up. This is what God says about me. This is who I am. This is my identity. This is my call. This is my vision. This is my purpose. Look at that. 
Look at yourself as, as if you have fulfilled the purpose. Look at that dream and never stop dreaming. Look at that dream and never quit on that dream. If God said to you, you're going to be best in that business, then you never quit on that dream. God needs you in that business. If God said you're going to be best in that profession, you never quit on that dream. If God said to me, you're going to be best in my business, I can never quit on that dream. I'm going to do signs and wonders through you. I've never done in any nation in all the world. God said that to me. I can never quit on it. Never. With a packed church or not a packed church. I can't. That's not the motivation factor. The motivation factor is the call. The word. The vision. That is in front. If that's in front... You are unstoppable. You're unstoppable. Be strong-willed. Be stubborn about the things of God. Never give up. Discipline yourself like there is no tomorrow. Work hard. Train hard. Surround yourself with people who will make sure that you're like a horse with blinders who can only stay the course and never get distracted. Such kind will bring heaven on earth and then we're going to have a rapture. It's about to happen. It is about to happen. But hey, it's closer than ever before. Absolutely. But hey, do you just want to go? I mean, do I just want to go and say, well, Moses did greater things than me. He saw you, God. And, say, and then say, okay, uh, probably that was not for me. And the word says, clearly, if you obey me, I will manifest myself to you. Peter was more, he did more awesome things than me. He saw more glory. He, were, he was more closer to you. Just go like that. Yeah, I'm just waiting for, for the return of the Christ now to come. If I know my master is coming, I've got to become more violent in my faith. I'm going to do more. I'm going to discipline more. I'm going to train more. I'm going to prophesy more. I'm going to be more fruitful. I'm going to reap more. Because I know my master reaps where he doesn't even sow. Success is your portion. You just have to grab it. Grab it. And you're going to be on the mat, but let not the mat define who you are. This is it. This is it. It never changes. It never changes. It never will. His love never changes. It never will. His grace never changes. It never will. If I am a son, that what's my portion? Wrath or grace? Thank you. Love or destruction? Love. Thank you. That means God never stops loving me. Put that on the boat. God never stops loving me. Meaning my first call is I'm a lover. I'm a lover. God loves me. I love him. My purpose is I'm a lover. My purpose is kingdom manifester. My purpose is greatness. What does greatness look like to you? Look to greatness with the word of God. Put it on the boat. Don't put anything on the boat that is not in the word. I'm a second class citizen. Well, then you shall be. I'm waiting for the return of the Christ and, oh, praise God, all these bad things are about to happen. If only we can get out of the place. Yes, you will get out of the place, but not just like this. I don't want to get out of the place with my head like, oh, thank you, Jesus. Uh, finally, we got picked up. Uh, praise God, we will be picked up, but I want to put on the biggest show the earth has ever seen. I want to put on the biggest show the earth has ever seen. Limbs growing out, boom. Dead people raised, blind eyes opened. Everything above and beyond and everything that God wants. Every day, 24-7 of my, uh, you know, I dream, I desire that every single place that Portland has entry exit points, there's somebody preaching the gospel, somebody seeing signs and wonders and miracles. 24-7, we have miracle praise, thanksgiving report for God. We take on one city, county, state, and then the nation, and then the nations of the world. We do it. That's my dream. That's my dream. Absolutely. I will not settle down till the time I have the world. When will you give? No, I will never give up. Till the time I have the world. Not just America, the world. The world. And I will conquer it. And you will see it happen. You will see it happen. What about you? Are we brothers and sisters? We got the same Holy Ghost flowing inside of us.
We got the same blood flowing inside of us. Well, if a demon can will and prevail, how much more you can? If an unclean spirit, a heathen, can prevail, how much more you can? You're one decision away from your breakthrough. One decision. One decision. And if you really decide, you can never quit on that decision. That'll require some building. That'll require some doing. That'll require right fellowship. That'll require everything right in your life. That will require accountability. Accountability. Big word in the church, but nobody wants it. Not nobody, a lot of people don't want it. <laughs> That's why a lot of people don't succeed. I want accountability. I want my wife to see everything about my life. And I want my brothers whom I'm accountable to see what is going in my life. I want prevention before cure. I want protection. I'm not stupid and say, devil, when I'm down, then you're going to pick me up. And then God will pick me up. I will not let him make me down. I will not be tempted. Do you know it is possible for you not to be tempted? Do you know that? It's, Jesus said, watch and pray that you f- do not fall into temptation. Think about it for a moment. And I understand the scripture it says, uh, which says, with every temptation, God gives a way out. But that's step two. I can stop the enemy and stop the temptation going from step one to step two if I just watched and prayed. You know what that, does that mean? It means I'm on the top of the mountain and I have a guard on. And I'm seeing, watching which temptation is getting close to me. As soon as I see something, I shoot it. Boom! I don't allow myself to be tempted. I'm accountable. Why is there a mess in the church? We don't want accountability. I am free. That freedom is not freedom. Freedom that has no boundaries of God is not freedom. That's a curse. You get, that's why fellowship is for. That we keep each other accountable and grow in God. Amen? Come on, guys. We, God means business with us. Do you mean business with God? How badly you want it. How badly you want it. If you really, 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 really want it bad enough, you're going to get it. You're going to get it. Nothing can stop you. Will. 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 That's what you take with you in the secret place. Will. I will to praise today. I will to give thanks to God today. I will to be disciplined. I will to succeed. That's my promise. And I'm going to do it. I mean, whatever it takes, whatever it takes, God, for it to manifest, I will do it. I will do it. Father, I thank you. And I bless you that you give us these golden nuggets from your word. Thank you, Lord, that we are made in your image and likeness. And we are way more superior than any demon. Lord, if a demon can succeed through will, Lord, I pray my will today is that you make our will stronger. Grant us the grace so we can will. If anybody doesn't have a will, I pray grant them the will. Your will. Your will. Your strength. Your will. Your will. Let their will destroy the will of the devil. Let their will break the will of every single demon. Let their will cause a breakthrough in the heavenly realms. Let their will destroy every plan the devil has for them and for their surroundings. Let their will never quit. Let their will never quit. I pray now in the name of Jesus. I stretch my hands towards myself and towards your body in this house and throughout the world. I stretch my hands and I say, let the will of God's people never be broken. Let the will of God's people prevail. Let the will of God's people break the will of the evil one. Let the will of God's people trump every other will. Let the will of God's people be 
always strengthened by the Holy Ghost. Let the will of God's people never quit. Let the will of God's people be topped with violent faith. Let the will of God's people move forward. In the mighty name of Jesus, I stretch my hands and I say, make your face shine upon our will. Make your face shine upon our will. Upon our will. In the name of Jesus, I release this. I release this. I release this in this house. I release this in this house. I release this in this house. Hold on a second. God's given you a will and desire for your family. Let the devil never break that will because of the symptoms which you see in your family. Don't be impressed by the symptoms. <laughs> when the symptoms show up, when they all go back, you look at the will of God. You look at the will of God. God says, tell them not to, not to be a... I, he, I see a yo-yo. God says, tell them not to be a yo-yo. When they see the symptoms, they start declaring and justifying the symptoms. You got to deny and say, no, this is the will of God. 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 You know, stick yourself to the will of God. It can make you look weird and crazy and that's okay. The arrows of the Lord are getting released right now. The arrows of the Lord, I see them all in the sanctuary. Arrows. Different sizes. The Lord says their will is more powerful than their neighbor's will. Your will can supersede their will and break their will. Your will, your will can change atmospheres. Your will, your will can change atmospheres. Your will, your will. Lift my will up today, Lord. I pray somebody who doesn't have the, the strongest of wills, they've gone probably through a really rough patch, rough season, I pray now. Grant them the grace and intimacy and love and mercy that will bring them super close to you and then work with their will. Work with their will. I hear the Lord say, you have not because you ask not. Just ask, Lord, make my will stronger. Make my will stronger. Make my will stronger. Make my will stronger. Huh. I am not only asking for my will to be stronger, Lord, I want your will exactly in the same manner you had. Give me the same will. You said you are, have not because you asked not. Okay, I'm asking for your will exactly in the same measure. Exactly did the same measure like you had, Jesus, when you walked this earth. Give it to me. Right now. I receive it. Thank you. Just receive it. Tell the Lord I receive it. I receive it, Lord. I receive it, Lord. This is my confession. Nothing can break my will. The will that God has given me, nothing can break my will. Nothing can stop me. I will prevail. I will prevail. I, will, I am ruling and reigning with Christ. This is my nation. The world is, is the harvest ground and I'm in charge of it. I'm in charge of it. I'm going to reap the harvest of the Lord. Jesus Christ will manifest through me. In the manner... He talked about in the scriptures, he said, greater things you shall do. He will manifest himself through me in a greater manner than ever the world has ever experienced.
the Spirit of God is here. Just let's make this confession right. Let's say, just uh, speak this, uh, speak this after me. I confess. I got the will of God. My will never, never shall be broken. I will prevail against all odds. I win. I'm a winner. I'm more than a conqueror. I will never give up. My will breaks the will of the devil. My will brings heaven to earth. My will heals the sick, manifests the kingdom, gives the kingdom. My will is successful. My will will never fail, will never quit, will never go back. In Jesus' name. Amen. We receive this, Lord. We confess this, and this is our reality. Unstoppable church. Unstoppable bride of Christ. Unstoppable people of God. Who will not just talk about Billy Graham's journey. They're going to have their journey. We will not talk about Paul's journey. They're going to have their journey. They're going to have their miracles. They're going to have their book. Acts of the Apostles, Acts of Pastor Vishal, Acts of Stephen, Acts of Eric, Acts of the Body, Acts of the Body. Thank you. Thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. yours. We're going to uh, give everyone an opportunity to uh, partner with this ministry, invest in the ministry, sow a seed. This is just a really good word that we heard today. And I pray that we grow in the knowledge of this, that God made us just like him. Jesus said, the gates of hell will not prevail against this church. <clears throat> the gates of hell will not prevail. The Bible says in Galatians, a comforting word in that it says, bear ye one another's burdens. <clears throat> That's a good word. It goes on to say, let every man prove his own work, and then shall he have rejoicing in himself alone and not in another. For every man shall bear his own burden. You can sit and you can wait for somebody else to come bear your burdens. But 
when you go to meet Jesus, the Bible just said, I'm responsible for bearing my own burdens. I can't say, oh, somebody was supposed to help me bear this. Nope. This is my burden to, to bear. I may need help or require help sometimes, and people will help me. But they're not accountable for helping me. I'm accountable for bearing my own burden. So receive this word that we heard today. Exercise our will for the goodness of the kingdom. Because that's what Jesus did for us. He put his will on the cross for us. If you want things to change in your life, it's your, your will. Exercise it. If you're watching us online, thank you for joining us. We appreciate your support and your prayers and comments, encouragement. Uh, if you want to partner with us online, you can visit remnantportland.com and partner with us that way. Uh, there's also uh, a way for you to text and give. Uh, you can use your cell phone and text 844-326-3655. Uh, and you can uh, set up a regular giving through a debit card, uh, but you can also set it up through your checking account. And if you set it up through your checking account, the company gets more money and the church gets less money and the church gets more of the money. It's a flat rate. When you're giving with your debit card, the company that processes the transaction gets a percentage. But if you use your checking account routing number, what happens is it's just a flat rate. So if you want your money to go to the company, use your debit card. If you want your money to go to the church, more of it, uh, use your routing number. Company probably hates that, but where do you want your money to go? It's your money. Don't mail us cash, though. Uh, if you want to mail it to us, you can write a check and make it payable to the Remnant, P.O. Box 67263, Portland, uh, 97268. Again, we're grateful to have uh, online uh, viewers that are being blessed by this ministry and contributing. Uh, we appreciate the support and we appreciate the extra fellowship. We are growing in fellowship here. Uh, Wednesdays, Thursdays, Saturdays, Sundays, Mondays, uh, we have fellowship. So we are committed to overcoming. If you want to be committed with us, join us. Um, I feel like there's an announcement. So the church is having a conference. It's going to be this coming weekend, Thursday the 28th through Saturday the 30th. It's at Gearheart by the Sea, which is on the beach in Gearheart. Uh, so contact Jerry or Tamara, and they will give you some information. Uh, this is a church-wide conference. Pastor Vishal is leading... Uh, some meetings based on growing, how to f grow in the manifesting the Holy Spirit. Again, your commitment level is up to you. But I urge you, exhort you, come to the conference. I have one more announcement. Uh, Halloween is Sunday this year. And we don't go trick-or-treating here. But we are going to have a worship night here at the church. And I'm pretty sure it's going to start at 7 o'clock. And we're going to be here and we're going to praise and worship God. Uh, because we're not going to partner with the world and their uh, exaltation of whatever they're exalting. We're going to exalt our God. And we are not going to say, well, this is their day. That's baloney. This is the day the Lord has made, and he made October 31st, too. And we're going to take October 31st, and we're going to praise God on it. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to be here Sunday night, 
And uh, we do have one stipulation, and that is because it's not Halloween, we're not going to be dressing up. Because if you're dressing up, you're really trying to celebrate a holiday that we're not celebrating. So let's just come and praise God. You can dress up however you want a crazy dress up like you, but don't dress up like somebody else because God made you and God made you awesome in his own image. So don't pretend that you have to be somebody else to be celebrated. Thank you. <laughs> so that's, that's just what we're going to do Halloween night. So anyway, God bless you all. I pray that you receive this word today, that your will is stronger than the will of the enemy, and that uh, we're going to hear stories about how strong your will is, how stubborn you are for God. Show us how stubborn you can be for God. We all need to be accountable, myself included. So let show, show me. Show me what you got. Call me out. Show me what you got. Okay, have a great week. God bless you all.